Welcome to the concluding discussion of FIDA's first European transdisciplinary conference on biodiversity and human well-being. Um, I am here with Professor Volker Moosburger, the spokesperson of FEDA, and also with Professor Katrin Böning Gese. She is the uh, professor for community and macroecology at the Goethe University at Frankfurt, and she is of course also a member of the advisory board of FEDA, and she has also been listening to three days of conference, doubling herself between the different workshops and with the two of you I want to yeah I want to talk about um, your conclusions your takeaways but also we want to invite all the participants who are with us here in this last plenary session of our conference to give us your ideas your insights your remarks your questions your visions your promises, whatever you feel like you want to share with us. Um, we want to talk about three questions about where we stand, what we learned. We want to talk about the question how to bridge the implementation gap and then about next steps and Volker and Katrin, they have prepared something for you for the last question. But now let's talk with a kind of um, yeah, summary. Where, where do we stand regarding bending the curve of biodiversity loss and what did we learn? Um, maybe Katrin, would you like to start while we are waiting for comments and questions and ideas from the audience to arrive? Very happy to do so. So it was a challenge, obviously, to summarize three days of intensive discussions and talks, and it was a wonderful and extremely inspiring conference. And when basically looking at the outcome, I, I had this news in the back of my mind, which was coming out yesterday in that um, last year in that um, 10,000 children, young adults, were asked from 10 different countries how they see their future. And 60% and the young people were coming from the global north and south. Almost 60% of the young people were extremely worried about climate change. And 75%, three out of four young people saw the future as frightening. And that's something where I think we scientists need to provide an answer. That's a for me, a really disturbing um, view, which we need to address. And I mean, the conference made sure that the situation is and stays dramatic. But my positive um, view I got out of this is that biodiversity protection and sustainable use is now starting to mainstream into different sectors. Its awareness is, is raising. And what I find very positive is the European political go um, goals, the European Green Deal, which is very ambitious with the problem that it will, that there's no teeth um, how to really implement it, but at least the ambition is there. And um, I attended three sessions on agriculture, businesses, and living in harmony with biodiversity. And I found the progress that we are making really inspiring and also encouraging. In agriculture and food systems, we more or less know where we need to go. The numbers and the goals are clear. Um, agroecology, organic farming, but at the same time changing the food systems, dietary change. In businesses, I find encouraging that businesses are seriously thinking about risks and impacts um, on biodiversity. And um, Adrien, Portafel mentioned that in BZG, their main issue is now get good um, advisors, consultants, and they are young company and they have difficulties recruiting people and even more they have difficulties keeping people because they want the young people in BZG want to do projects that have a purpose and that contribute to the larger good. And there you see that basically they the, Fridays for Future movement is, is coming into yeah, businesses and power positions and is starting to, to change the thinking. And for the um, living in harmony with nature discussions, I was most surprised how strong the relational values are in comparison to instrumental and intrinsic values in terms of how we relate to nature and that this is so important not only in the global south, but also in 
in in Germany in in Bavaria, and we have actually um, a landslide in our perception of biodiversity and a rediscovering of values we obviously always had but didn't think about uh, very much. So overall, <laughs> a very positive um, general impression of what we have achieved in this conference. What about you, Volker? Do you agree? I mean, we both were in the session with uh, Mark Chesney, who said, OK, it's just greenwashing and the financial sector is so lost, we don't even imagine. And saying this as an economist studying exactly this is hard news. And uh, so do you keep your optimism? I mean, I, I was surprised about all the new aspects in uh, that came up in this conference. And a bit it was like, actually, you're mostly known in, in, in science. You start with a few questions and you end up with many new questions. <laughs> and this is a bit the feeling that I have after this conference. So when I when, when we started, we just have about three questions. That this is what, us, what interests us. And now it's really a much more complex picture. So and I can fully agree what um, Katrin was saying um, on a more meta level, I would say what became very clear is, I mean, she was mentioning this, awareness is growing, that this is really a serious problem. It's also clear that people do not yet really understand what to do. So this is different in climate. So people know I have to reduce CO2, but what do I have to do in biodiversity? And an important issue was there also pointed out by BCG in, in their presentation, a key topic is food, right? So awareness grows, but we still have a lack of information. What can we do? Certainly food sector, including agriculture is a key. Um, and then I think what turned out as a result is, and this will be our next question is actually that we have an implementation gap. So we have a lot of good ideas. We have a lot of good suggestions, but also programs. And it's very, very difficult to bring this, these programs. I mean, I'm also talking about uh, the Green Deal. I'm also talking about the EU biodiversity strategy, very ambitious. Uh, Water Framework Directive, um, very ambitious, but it's still very difficult to make a success out of these programs. So we have this implementation gap. And this is, uh, from my perspective, a clear indication why we need this transdisciplinary approach, not just research, but transdisciplinary approach, um, where you have a core design right from the beginning. Whenever you start something, you do it together with the stakeholders. And this means not just policy, the funding agencies that may have top-down programs, but you also include the major actors in these, in these fields. And in this respect, I think also a self-critical component. You know, when, when we started to think at FEDA, to think about uh, such a conference. We called it a transdisciplinary conference, but still we started to think at it from a scientific point of view. We didn't really design this whole conference right from the beginning with stakeholders. We came up with ideas and then talked to various stakeholders. Would you be ready to join? Would you be ready to give a talk? We didn't really design it right from the beginning together with the stakeholders. And this is certainly also a lesson learned um, from this conference the next time we go for a transdisciplinary conference right from the beginning we need an organizing committee that includes the relevant stakeholders so um so the mission i think from um this conference is on the one hand side think about great ideas how we can bridge the implementation gap and also yeah try to be you know endeavor to develop new thinking and create thinking i mean for that reason we had this last workshop horizon scanning and i think we really had provocative talks that really stimulated uh things um and i really hope that uh, this last um 
workshop really helped us all to think a bit out of the box. What is good, what we have done so far, what should be the next step, what could be also even revolutions or so. I think we, we need to open our mind just for, for new thinking. And this is also something that we will address later when we talk about the redesign of the German and European um, research landscape. Okay, then, then then let's ask you, all the participants who are still here right. at the three long uh, conference days, um, we would like to see the Mentimeter picture in, in the chat. So we, you can use the Mentimeter to tell us which, is, which approach is the most promising to bend the curve and promote biodiversity. What do you think? Um, can we start the Mentimeter, please? But you can also use the chat and give us some words if you want to. So... Uh, to all these who are still um, there and, and looking for ideas, what do you think is I the mean, most promising? It would certainly be interesting to, to get some comments back from the audience, how their impression was, what kind of take-home messages they have. Uh, here you see... Ah, the, okay, the it was only our chat. Obviously. Okay. Alina Schulte. Uh, Anna, she just gives us the instructions. So maybe we, we do have, if you have difficulties finding the, the Menti code and use it, because my Fairphone sometimes doesn't, doesn't accept these QR codes. So uh, maybe you just write into the, into the chat what, what. Ah, no, it's there. There we are. There we are on our way to getting solution. Governance. Yeah, I do agree which is important. Governance was the first, <laughs> first word. Volker, what would be your word? And Katrin? Ah, there we go. Science communications, public engagement. That's what Marvin Huber said, the EU and youth delegate. I, I would also go um, for the bottom-up approaches because there's also considerable research showing that if you want to transform systems, if their transformation impetus is coming from the top, it um, usually stalls and it's not very successful. If we think back uh, when the Green Party wanted to introduce the Veggie Day, it was such an outcry. It was off uh, the political agenda um, as, as quickly as it was on the political agenda. But now this slow transformation of the food system and especially young people moving towards more uh, plant-based diets, this is now gaining ground and is basically entering the discussions via the companies, uh, food industry, and hopefully finally reaching politics. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. But I think it were mostly conservative media who were pushing the outcry. And I'm not sure if the people were really so um, so loud or whether they were just reinforced by by, um, by special media who didn't want this system to change. So, but still we see a change and we see, I, I'm, I'm delighted to see degrowth in, um, in, in big letters in the center. And of course, communication and governance and courage and public yeah. engagement. Yeah and a broad implementation, and I saw the word together. That's so nice to see this growing, this word cloud. And Great. I, I, I think it's it's reasonable to see three yeah, words here, communication, governance, communication, decros, so which are the most prominent ones. And uh, I, I think this is really reflecting what we all feel. I mean, from my perspective, being a very democratic person, so I think biodiversity mainstreaming is in many respects the key. You know, in, in, in a democracy, the people have to decide what they want to have. So if they understand how important biodiversity for their well-being is, and if they really, I mean, as Katrin was pointing out, also have an emotional understanding of that, then it will change in the right direction in whatever way this may happen, be it by decrows or by great inventions, engineering, whatever. Okay, I think we can um, leave this world uh, word cloud and, and and watch it grow and remove and re um, <laughs> rebuild. But we could we should start to answer the second question, um, and that is still to me it's quite open. It's how to how to bridge the um, 
how to close the impl um, impl implementation um, gap. In the morning, in the sessions about the governance and the society harmony with nature question uh, session, there were, it, it, we felt kind of this is complementary. We need society to push our politics to be, make a better governance, but also we need governance to well, force people who, who are not willing to change. So what, what would be your answer to um, to this, Volker? What is the best, uh, what are the best practice examples to bridge the implementation gap? Transdisciplinarity, yeah. So you can start answering while um, our audience. Uh -huh. Because me. you have some, you have oh, I'm sorry. When when I look at which which of the presentations I found most most inspiring and where I saw saw really change on the ground, I realized that basically all of them were coming not out of the scientific sector. For example, uh, the presentation in by Edwin Ocker, um, who is a community elder, and he just presented um, very calmly his extremely successful community based forest protection approach in in Nigeria and it's it's it was coming out of the local communities or also this uh, building sustainable buildings uh, presentation by Eckhart Daug I found most um, impressive or um, also the but I think these are still very careful steps of businesses to engage in in um, reporting on biodiversity and ecosystems I think that are very very soft first and careful first steps that are taken. I think this still needs uh, quite uh, some more um, development. And for the food systems, I what I found interesting is a presentation by Julia Heinz looking at the biodiversity impact of food and um, going all the way to, um, to also um, provide recipes. Um, so you can actually measure the biodiversity footprint of a meal but nevertheless, and that's what I was missing here, picking up on, on Volker's notion, I've been to a um, um, workshop or a, a meeting of the Naturland um, um, Verband, and they celebrated their 40th birthday. And they started out 40 years ago, being founded by five engaged uh, farmers. And now Naturland has 140,000 members all over the world in many developing countries. And I think this is also a bottom up movement in the agricultural sector that has really impact and not only here in Germany, but also globally. And that's, I think, case studies where we can learn from, which, which was missing here on the conference. And I echo very much Volker's opinion here I, I also felt very much we are sitting here too much in the scientific bubble. Hmm. So for the next con uh, conference, um, as Volker told you, you, you're thinking about a co-design with all the stakeholders right from the beginning. You'd go for an invitation of Naturland or other organic farmer um, associations or, um, or can, you, can you give us also other stakeholders that you would like to take uh, part in the conference? You know, I mean, the major actors, of course, on, on one hand side, it's science, but then it's politics, the decision makers that decide about the regulations. Then it's certainly the business economy um, and the civil society. Uh, so you may include the civil society by NGOs, but also by the as we have seen, I think there's an interesting uh, institution, the European Youth Parliament. And I think this is really something important that we have to include much more of the young generation. So, I mean, it's not acceptable that they need to go to the road, to the streets, just to make themselves heard. So they should be part of such planning processes. Right? Okay, that's good to see that the next conference is already growing in your minds and that you are kind of networking yeah, and yeah, and getting inviting also the European Youth Parliament, etc. So while we have been talking there, uh, there are already the first answers to the audience's uh, suggestions about the best practice examples and I have seen startups and participation um, in a, um, a part, a participate 
participative open science is uh, something that you have been promoting throughout the conference. And I can also read, go out to the institutions and into the society as well. Um, but still also the call for regulations for big business. Transdisciplinary wor uh, work is, is uh, I think, that is set for sure. Uh, the local grassroots approaches are mentioned. And um, do you want to maybe, Katrin, do you want to pick out some of the of the um, topics that have been nice? The Nigerian case of Edwin Oga has been named as a good best yeah. practice e uh, example. The Barcode of Life initiative is here. And also that social media matter, of course, they do. Um, and the cooperation with local people. Katrin, do you want to pick out others that I uh, think um, are important for you? Also, one other project I found very interesting, that's a citizen science project that is recording soundscapes and it's mm -hmm. identifying species. And I think that's a very smart way of, again, reconnecting people with, with nature and with individual species. And um, the way it's done, it's also... Um, it's done in a, in a practical and modern way with smartphones and, and all using all the um, possibilities of artificial intelligence. And um, in this way, it's also a democratization of natural history knowledge in that it, it's becoming much more ac accessible and not only uh, the knowledge of the, the academic experts who know about the species and then speak in favor of nature and speak in fa favor of, of um, protecting species. And I mean, uh, older generations have uh, learned species actually at school and that's an, and that has become old fashioned and I think it's hardly done anymore. And basically using these modern tools to reconnect people is a wonderful win-win situation. And uh, once a, a, a smart use and a good use of all the new technology. <laughs> I absolutely agree because uh, we all have to relearn listening to listen, uh, to nature and having these uh, sound landscapes. It, it makes it so much easier than to step out in, 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 in nature and actually try to find the remaining voices that are still there. Um, what do you no. think? Do we continue, Volker, or any, any other ideas? No, I, I would just like to point out there was an interesting... Uh, mentioning of startups we haven't talked about this in um in the conference or at least not in the workshops i have been but i really think that this is an interesting topic so you start to develop a business model that is green and it's easier this is something we all know it's easier to start up something to start something new that is green than to transform a big company that is not green over the last hundred years and to transform it into a green company. So I, I really think uh, green startups could be an important model how this can grow. But summing up what, what I have seen here, I mean, it's pretty clear you have examples what you have to do in a top-down uh, way regulations all kinds of regulations governance and then on the other hand you need the bottom-up uh, concepts and only i think in this interplay it will really work it cannot work alone with grassroots concepts and it will not work alone with regulations so we need need the two otherwise it will probably not not work I have seen uh, my favorite, I would like to mention that too, that is the network between former school canteens and restaurants. Um, yeah Creating, being maybe what you described, bottom up and 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 and, um, and the other way around, meeting in, in the meeting in the middle in a network where all the actors meet together and work on, on the transformation of a food system, which brings more biodiversity to the fields and more diversity on the plates and makes students even healthier and creates less health problems nutritional problems good it's a good idea it's a good best um, practice example to me 
So I think we have a lot of ideas. This is a long list. Um, and we have to scroll up and down to see all the, the best practices. Um, but we are coming to talk about the next step, I think. And this one goes to Volker. Sorry, Katrin, for mixing up the, <laughs> the, the answers. But um, Volker wants to answer, um, wants to discuss the next steps, what needs to be done. And while he is talking, you can all start, you in the audience can all start to, to give us um, Give us your ideas what has to be done, what your next steps would be. But Volker and Katrin, you have prepared something to as a kind of outcome, as an outcome of this conference. Will you will you present this? I can I can start with or would you like maybe no, we please, start with a more general aspect or we start with the research topic. Up to you. And perhaps before we go into the, the declaration, I think I realized that the way we do conferences in science is very limited because the problem solving is evolving around often concrete questions. Obviously, we have these multinational agreements like the ones coming up um, of the C CBD in, in Montreal in December. That's where basically all nations are gathering and that's a global approach. But a lot of the change is happening regionally and locally between people who know each other and who are like uh, the mention, uh, what you just mentioned, uh, um, Tanya, about um, local collaboration between farmers, school canteens and, and NGOs, it's happening locally. And I think these people wouldn't attend a conference like this, discussing three days, very broad scientific issues. So I think we also need to, to do this differently in, 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 in more local and more, more concrete and more also um, more, um, more focused meetings on certain topics with, where people come together and discuss be best practice uh, models on, in business sector or in, in agriculture or within um, communication and so on. And, and uh, so the next meetings, I think we, we probably should need, take a different approach uh, to, to, uh, to target these, these, um, back, um, these ex ex exchanges better. Okay, I think that's already in the making <laughs> and in your thinking. So then, Volker, you you start with your next steps or with the conference outcome. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I would also like to invite the people in the audience to send us ideas via the chat or later via email. What kind of joint action you would suggest? I mean, FEDA will certainly next week have a meeting just to sum up a bit what have we learned and what could be next steps i mean you all know one of the goals of this conference was also to develop synergies to foster networks european networks so and we have met a lot of new people and not a lot of new disciplines and approaches and so starting from FEDA and the interests of FEDA. So we will certainly reach out to these people just to build up the network. But in addition, we also offer um, to be active for other people. So if you have certain needs and say, yes, this would be an interesting idea if you could take care of a networking or organizing something to move forward in a certain aspect to develop a platform or whatever, then give us a hint call us, send us an email, and uh, because we really s feel that we have the opportunity actually to link the various groups and the various yeah, endeavors, approaches, uh, not only over Germany, but also in Europe. So we have an efficient uh, team, as you have seen over the last three days. So we are really ready to take over also to, to help others to link and to develop larger and more efficient uh, networks. Uh, one approach that we will follow in any case uh, is something that you know. This is about uh, redesigning the European um, research funding and evaluation um, landscape. And I would like to show you where we are right now. I have to double click and then, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
Okay. I see a draft. <laughs> you see a draft, yes. <laughs> and you see a text and you see our nice yeah, logo, if you like. So we have sent to you before we started the conference, I think it was on Tuesday, uh, a draft for a conference statement designing the European research landscape to reverse the trend in biodiversity loss and to achieve sustainability. And we have invited comment, comments, suggestions, uh, how we can improve it or what you think about it. So uh, the replies that we got were all positive. We did not have a single uh, comment that said, this is rubbish, we don't need that, just forget about it, it's all there, or something like that. We got a number, not very many, we got a number of suggestions and uh, that change, not the overall approach, but that change um, certain aspects of it. And I would like to go through some of these changes so that you simply know what, what we have changed. As far as I can see, all the changes are important, improve the statement, but do not change um, the overall concept or so. And the idea of this um, conference statement is that the various groups, the various nations, the various bodies can talk to their funding agencies, to their institutions and say, here we have hints that we should do something about redesigning the landscape to do transdisciplinary and transformative research. And in this concept, you also find a number of um, uh, hints in what direction this should go. I would start with the first page. Actually here, all people were happy. So we did not get um, information or suggestions how we should change something in the first page so the people think what we said there or suggested there this is basically the result of the scientific advisory board of uh, FEDA with input from other people also that this is reasonable and describes uh, the picture um, just this morning uh, no yesterday evening I got uh, an information uh, and suggestions from three uh, female scientists from Biodiv Culture, Kultur uh, in, in FEDA. They suggested maybe we should emphasize somewhere here or somewhere else that we should also focus uh, on the role that Europe should play in all this biodiversity, international biodiversity uh, game. and we discussed this just over lunch and we decided that we will not include this clear focus we would request that europe plays a stronger role in this statement nevertheless we all agree that we sh as europe we should do that but because this is rather um scientific or a concept about how to change the research landscape. It's not a political paper to encourage politicians to play a major role in the CBD conference and so on and so forth. Many other people do that already. And um, for that reason, we agreed when I had a conference, uh, a, a talk with the three ladies that uh, we simply reinforce the statement in some places that we need an international collaboration. Um, this is something that was missing so far. So this is included. For some reason, it's always jumping. I have no idea why this is so. Maybe other people that have speakers right click on it or whatever. Um, ah, now it's better. Good. Um, so the first page will stay as it is right now. We will simply add at one place that we would like to reinforce um, international collaboration. And this may also play a role later on in, in, in the topics. Then we go to the next. And here we say uh, more, I mean, I should first emphasize again. So. This phrase of Einstein, if it's really from Einstein, so there's still a debate about that, but it sounds like him. 
you can never solve problems with the same way of thinking that created them. I think this is really a key message also from the um, uh, from this conference. So really start with fresh thinking, fresh approaches. So and for that reason, um, we have here the phrasing more specifically the European Green Deal and the efforts to implement the European biodiversity strategy and to achieve the UN SDGs should be accompanied by a, a redesign of the European landscape a national research landscape. So it's both European and national, which complements important, the classical and still necessary and relevant disciplinary and interdisciplinary research concepts with. Now we have A to F topics. And basically, there are minor uh, minor changes to that. For instance, we have minor changes in the sense that it does not change the overall concept, but are important additions. For instance, we mentioned we like planetary thinking because it's a historical concept that includes the Earth's history, includes global responsibility uh, also over the history and global responsibility and stewardship. And here we add and consequent holistic approaches ranging from the micro to the macro scale. This was an addition by microbiologists uh, that emphasized we all focus on the big organisms. So in particular giraffes and lions and <laughs> these aspects, but most important are also the soils and all the microbes in it for that reason. Uh, the, the hint we need to go from the micro scale to the macro scale, not just focusing on what we can see with our eyes, but also what we can see with our techniques. Um, important addition from our perspective, um, and then um, funding here, funding and evaluation schemes adequate for transformative transdisciplinary research. And this is an addition from the three ladies, from uh, scientists, from uh, Biodev culture, including long term studies, because they mentioned that um, what we need are long term studies, but most funding ends after three years, right? So um, I think this is really an important aspect. Also, we had this addition, and also including strong partnership with relevant stakeholders. We, and this means all stakeholders from business to NGOs and uh, civil society, uh, reinforce, uh, reinforcing long-term sustainability goals. Also, I think an important but not game-changing addition. Um, then we had minor changes here, where it has to do with the, um, with the data. Uh, the formulation is a bit different, a bit broader, broad research initiatives to explore and harness the potential of digitalization, open science and advanced data science and technologies. So this is the new aspect in there. Um, so we really need to implement open data, open science. And um, that's about it for these topics A to F. And then there is another important addition that just came up uh, from the uh, scientists from Biodiv Kultur that they said, we need to be aware that whatever we do is part of a major societal framework. And we have to admit that the societal conditions for scientists in particular for female scientists, but also for young scientists, are not yet optimal. There is room to get better. For that reason, we added here this workshop. I mean, the key statement here is this is not what you all have to do, but these are key elements to point out the direction we want to go. And the basic suggestion is we should have national and European transdisciplinary workshops to explore options for adapting the funding and research landscape toward promoting strengthening planetary thinking, transdisciplinary and systemic sustainability transformation research. So these are ideas, but the real work should be done by workshops. And um, Volker, you might need to move the, the um, pages. We are still seeing oh. page two. You, oh, it no, no, that, that's that is that is correct. Okay. If it's page two, then it's correct. So you can see based on these ideas we propose, national and European, you can see A to that. F with yeah. A to F on it. Yeah. 
And you also see this bold paragraph where my cursor is based on these ideas, or you can't see that? The, the last paragraph, yeah. Yeah. I cannot see the cursor, maybe the others can't, but it's the last paragraph. Okay. On the... the last paragraph, the last uh, phrase there, this is the, ah, okay. There, thank you, Philip. <laughs> okay, helps us. Great, Philip, thanks a lot. Can Philip, can you point to the last two lines of this page? Right. There it says, these workshops should also help to further develop a fair research environment for researchers. So, and this includes take care of your young scientists and take care of your female scientists so that we have a diversity and fair research conditions. So these are the only, well, the only important, but not really game changing additions to what we have sent around. We were very happy to get a positive response and also very clear and important additions to that. Now the question is, is there any more um, idea coming up? What you feel like that? Uh, can you accept it? Or, you know, the basic idea is now, if we don't have more additions to that, um, then we would edit this and put it as a conference statement on our website. And then everybody is free to work with this conference statement. And we at FEDA, we will certainly use this to go along these lines and organizing workshops to think about what could be, at least for the German level, what could be a redesign, a reasonable redesign for um, adequate research and funding and evaluation landscape. You remember the introductory talk by um, the Leibniz uh, president, she also pointed that out that we really need something like this. So we in Germany, we, we will of course use this, but we encourage all the people actually to use this conference statement also to get active. How about you, Katrin? Do you feel like adding some points? I mean, you have a huge experience of research and yeah, she's collaboration a member of the with young scientists. <laughs> we have discussed this jointly for quite some some uh, time, so I'm completely happy with with the draft here. And what I also uh, like very much is, is this um, um, emphasis on um, the research environment and um, the diversity and inclusiveness of this environment. So, so I, I very much appreciate this being now uh, in, in the draft. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, do we all um, have another look at the third Mentimeter question, which was is about research, research, uh, research funding, do we need, etc. I think it was uh, it has already started, but we didn't talk about the answers. And I would like to invite you all to give us some more ideas. Maybe can we, I think we have to stop screen sharing and then yeah. we can only see the Mentimeter question. Can we see this again, the third Mentimeter question? There we go. So, and I think for what I see is very much in line what you described, um, but would yeah, you like you to comment on You have the long-term research. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, you, you have the long-term research here in the middle, so people really feel this is something we need. Yeah. It's funding for communication. Um, this is here. It's, it's, I can see it twice. Um, so this, uh, the writing would be better. Uh, it would be even bigger. So um, I'm not sure whether whether I've seen this in your draft. Um, what we we don't have specifically the word communication. Maybe you are right. We could include something like mainstreaming. I mean, it is included in transdisciplinary work because this cannot work without communication and uh, this is actually one of the major worries we have when we do transdisciplinary research that the scientists are mostly funded but all the collaborators from the stakeholders they don't get money and this also includes the outreach people so uh, this is one of the major topics actually that we would like to address when you go for larger programs you go for transdisciplinary research you need to fund all the participants, not just the science in it. Yeah, right. 
So right. And maybe this is even more than just funding for communication, but the communication starts even before the the results yeah. are there. It's 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 I mean it's like stepping back and more further to the for to the ground of this. I see wildlife in there. <laughs> we have been talking about our nature, society, culture, and this false division of us, the people, and there are the nature. So wildlife would be, I think, uh, with us people in it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Catherine, yeah. Catherine? What I also find interesting, it's it's not written very largely, but at least it's there, and we haven't thought about is art and science, uh, This, um, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, in a way, two ways of understanding the world and um, being creative. So that is also, I think, a very interesting new development we could uh, work on more, more fully. Also stories or songs, also completely different ways of expressing um, relationships with nature. Sure, there is a theater of the Anthropocene in Berlin that has been founded yeah. like two years ago. And they, I think they are very much working on as a means of communication of uh, of uh, taking all the results of this Anthropocene science towards people who so far didn't, didn't uh, check scientific articles, but who go to the theater and think about it, what it means. Yeah. That's so great. Thank you to everybody for, for giving us these um, these these ideas um, that are very much in line indeed with what Martina Bockmeyer said in the beginning of the conference and that the two of you summed up in your draft for the new redesign of research together with people in a society, complementary and transdisciplinary. Uh, that's really great. To me, it's a great outcome of this conference. Um, we have some minutes to go. We can take last questions, last suggestions by the audience. We are not using Mentimeter, but just telling us in the chat what you want to be discussed, if you want to add something, if you want to give us further advice. And um, what I yeah, what Katrin, go ahead. What me thinking about this, uh, the horizon scanning session is these two very radical approaches on, on business sector and also on how we think about nature conservation that are really radical and um, revolutionary. I wonder, <laughs> basically picking up uh, uh, this, the sentence, um, is there uh, the right way in the wrong one? Um, so can we basically change um, biodiversity protection in a system that is so profoundly working uh, in a different direction? Or do we really need more radical changes uh, at the very roots of our thinking and economy? What is your answer to this question? <laughs> So far, I was uh, thinking about changing the system and greening the economy and um, basically adapting nature conservation to to be more inclusive. But I'm starting to wonder more and more if this is not sufficient and if we need to be more radical. I think it's worth reading Bram Buescher and, and all the other convivialist authors. I am at the University of Hamburg. I, I am in the team of Frank Adler, who is also one of the convivialists in, in, in Germany. And I think he, he might be also very interested in talking about biodiversity. Because I think in sociology, it's not at all radical to say the system doesn't work. And we have to rethink ourselves being part of nature and reconnect from nature. I think the sociologists think for them it's just normal <laughs> being surrounded by by um, radical economists I think so I mean my perspective is you know either the evolutionary way will work when we are successful and if it doesn't work then we will have the revolutionary way so the only I way think. to escape a revolution is to move on and change in the right direction if they don't do it the society and this society includes us as actors in a democratic world and the business and finance and whoever are conservationists if we do not go on a smooth transition then we will have a revolution in this respect hmm. it's like by design over disaster yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like the uh, martin huber 
what was it breakthrough or breakdown right the he invited you to scientists to, for future so maybe you can be part of the team that uh, calls for fa fast direction yeah let's see let's see so are we um are we ready to conclude because we have a last uh, mentimeter um question that we could start right now Okay. Um, which goes, uh, can, no. <laughs> which goes, what do you personally take away from the conference? So if you step to the next question, that should be a last question. And this is the last centimeter to of this conference. <laughs> but let's see if we get another word cloud of um, takeaways. Let's see. Oh, okay. There are already a lot of answers. It's inspiration, transdisciplinarity, transformation, complexity, digging deeper, stakeholder engagement, link, think like a river. Oh, that's yeah. great. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I have learned so much about rivers without any dams in it and that are not embedded in a straight road being yeah. highways for, for transportation, but real rivers, living rivers. That's so great. What's your favorite, Katrin? I <laughs> I thought I like the radical thinking. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm really curious what is going to be the result and uh, what I'm going to hear from you in the next weeks with um, all these new thinking coming up. And Volker, what's your favorite? I cannot really tell. I mean, um, for good reasons, transformation, complexity, inspiration are in the center. I think this describes a bit the overall um, atmosphere, but we still had one mentioning, not too much. The question, what, <laughs> what do you personally take away from the conference? One person said not too much. And I can also understand this because, I mean, it's just <laughs> so many different aspects that came up. So it may be difficult for many to to sort this out, what it really means to my own work, to what, what I do. But I mean, from my perspective, it's really what we have in the, in the center. It's very complex. It's not so simple uh, like we 50 years ago thought conservation would work. We build a, a fence around it and protect it and that's it. This will no longer work. So it's really a complex system. And, Science alone will not do it. We need society and all the actors. So, and this is complex and not an easy task. And I, I, for my person, I can say I, I learned a lot and it stimulated me to go more in this direction and really to, to start the co-design really right at the beginning. Not you have an idea and then you go to the correct stakeholders, but you, you start to talk with you have a problem, a societally relevant problem, and then you talk to stakeholders, what can we do about it? So, hmm. yeah. I, it didn't to, I didn't think about not taking too much away, but not um, too much in the sense of not uh, of, of escaping the growth paradigm and going into sufficiency. Ah, okay. So maybe it was ah. like this. <laughs> we, don't I misunderstood know. That. we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I take urgency and hope because these are the kinds of feelings that I um, but I'm overwhelmed with so having looked at the situation of biodiversity and also the climate system. So I think we, the three of us, uh, we have a long list of people um, to say thank you. And let me start with the technical team and also um, Mr. Tafner and Mr. Sprenger in the background who have helped me a lot with, and also Mr. Gross with a lot of information and all the questions I had. Thank you very much for preparing this for me. And also thank you for the technical team that everything fit really run so smoothly with all being us here all over Europe talking to each other for three days. That was really a great experience. So thank you to all of you. And now I pass over for you for the last words because I think you feel like you have some people to say thank you again. <laughs> Katrin or Volker, who of you wants to start? We would like to thank you uh, for, for your, this wonderful um, moderation of the whole conference, which was really a, a stronghold of all these different ideas coming out and ordering them and putting them in place. And um, I agree with uh, thanking the whole team in organizing this conference. This has been going on now for weeks and months. And um, it, 
it's not um, easily visible how much work it is. And also from my, my side, a, a big thank you. Yeah, we have to thank you, uh, Tanya, but also Emily Wickham, who did a great right, job right. yesterday. Um, so you were a fantastic team and helped us yeah, to keep in time and to bring all the different branches together to something that we can take home. Uh, I would like to thank at this place also uh, the BMBF, the Ministry for Education and Research, and in particular State Secretary Mario Brandenburg uh, for his opening statement. We are very happy that the EU Commission was well represented, Virginius Sinkevicius and Umberto Delgado Rosa. They gave, gave very important statements. I mean, I really liked the emphasis on restoration, that this will be the next uh, major step, really not just conserving, but focusing in Europe on restoration. And also Einstein Janssen, who pointed out that ERC is also focusing on uh, excellent research in biodiversity. And we learned in the stakeholder workshop actually that transdisciplinary research can also be or is typically also excellent. So don't worry if you do transdisciplinary research, it can still be excellent. So this is an old worry in people. If you talk to stakeholders, you no longer are excellent scientists. And then above all the, the key persons, the speakers and panelists, uh, great, great contributions. I'm really happy that we recorded almost everything. We didn't record the um, Science Slam yesterday, unfortunately. Um, great presentations. I really, really love them. Um, and then, of course, the organizing committee and Science Advisory Board of uh, the FIDA and, uh, yeah, Lindmans, the technical support, and of course, Julian Tafner and his team from the Central Coordination Office, and above all, the audience. So in total, we had uh, something like 400 participants that have been part of the conference, not always present. So it was arranged between 200 and seven, uh, between 200 and 70 persons at the same time. And now to the end, of course, there's a fading out. But uh, it's really great that you all have taken your time, shared your insights, your expertise with us. We will learn from all of you and we will keep in touch. We will contact you with the results, the statement. And the, the speakers, I should say, have all provided their key messages. We will sum them up and then also post it on the website so that you have the key messages from all the presentations here. A great experience. Many, many thanks. It was really worth the effort and worth the three days. Thank you all. Thank you so much to the spokesperson of FEDA, Volker Moosbrugger. And please follow FEDA on social media. There are lots of ways to do They Start with the website. It's www.feda.bio. Point, uh, slash DE or whatever language you choose, but just use the chance to follow FEDA on social media, wherever, whichever is your favorite channel. Thank you, Volker. Thank you, Katrin. Um, I'm going to take a rest and think about all the things that I've learned, but yeah. I hope we'll all together bend the curve and help biodiversity because it's our own survival we are talking about. Thank you. Take care. And bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Have Thank a nice you. weekend to everyone, wherever you are. Bye. Bye.